Okay, everybody. Well, welcome. This is going to be a really, really fun phase. I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. Um, this is inking, and inking is a very broad subject. It's a subject that encompasses, uh, you know, brush, quill, ballpoint pen, and it can be also sumi brush inking. We could do calligraphic brush inking. There's all kinds of ways to do inking, and inking has been a very popular medium for, for, for centuries. Um, extremely popular towards the end of the 1800s when you had people like Joseph Clement Cole, um, some of my favorites, Franklin Booth, Montgomery Flagg, um, uh, Edwin Austin Abbey, she's Frazetta, and then we get into more modern like Frazetta and Wrightson and all these guys. So uh, love traditional inking. This I'm going to go through some samples just to kind of get you inspired and excited uh, about this medium. We're going to start with the most simple of the three, top, or, uh, three uh, tools we'll be using, which is ballpoint pen. And then we'll move to quill, and then we'll move to brush, and then we'll marry the two together, and we'll have a nice understanding of uh, the value of inking. Inking is really a calligraphic medium. It's also a very unforgiving medium, one of the most unforgiving you can't erase, similar to watercolor or some of the other ones. And so it cultivates a directness in the way you work, a design uh, on the fly kind of calligraphy um, that you couldn't really put in place that many other ways um, that I can think of. So this is a really wonderful opportunity. It's a training medium. The medium, I kind of liken it to Latin because it's kind of a dead language, but it's a very helpful language. So we don't want, I, I see very few people teaching it anymore. I see very few people teaching it well anyway in, in that old traditional manner. So my goal will be to bring to you about 30 hours of, uh, of inking demonstration uh, of everything that we can th I can think of that I've, I've learned over the last uh, 30 years or so. So now inking is not my primary medium, but it is one that I use a lot. I use it as a sketch medium. I use it to explore design, vignetting, uh, things like that. So if you look at this page right here, we've got a little architectural vignette up here in the corner. And uh, how you end this drawing, vignette means to prematurely end a drawing in an attractive manner. You may remember me saying that in some other phase. But you can see there's uh, whether to go with or against the form, cross-hatching, deep cross-hatching to make it look more like a deep shadow or spreading the lines apart. And we'll talk about this in a minute when I demonstrate the basic use of this tool. Right now I'm just showing you examples that will hopefully get you excited. we got a little uh, anatomy study down here. So this is a vignette page with a smattering. It doesn't really have a subject to it. I think it was just demonstrating in class. So I'm going to run through these pretty quick so we can stay on point. I've got a lot to show you. Um, so yeah, look at, and now here is freehand perspective where we're actually doing little vignettes of architectural, uh, you know, castles and, uh, you know, more Papua New Guinea type, you know, and then over here we have like France or some street scene in Europe, uh, China down here, and you're just freehanding your uh, vanishing points perspective. So you're learning how to sketch perspective without using it so technically. Right. And that's something that's very difficult. Sometimes you have to come to that through technical training in perspective first, then sketching or vice back and forth between those two, because it does help to have a formal understanding of perspective. And you can go over and you can take Eric's and some of my dad's classes to learn more about perspective. And it'll be kind of interthread or threaded through a lot of these phases. So these are the ones I've kind of grabbed out of my flat file. And they're just examples of various things that I sketch when I'm studying or when I'm trying to memorize information. So it could be anatomical information like the leg up here or the back of this guy standing here. There's probably an invented figure here, an invented head down here. So it allows me to see what kind of retained knowledge I've gained from other phases, from other uh, disciplines that I've studied. Anatomical with charcoal, anatomical with ballpoint pen. I mean, there's lots of ways you can approach studying this stuff. And we're trying to show you as many uh, solid examples of that as possible. Here's an example of a page. Again, we've got some dragons in here. Um, I could be drawing anything from dragons to anatomy. A lot of times you'll see anatomy being a common theme because I'm very interested in it. And it's one of my favorite areas. But you also see lots of little head inventions, just little heads that I'm making up. Um, could be a character for a comic, could be concepting. If you're a visual development artist or an artist that's going into storyboarding, it's a great medium, great thing to learn how to do. Um, it'll help you in all areas your oil painting, digital painting, anything. It's design. I think I did this one online as a uh, Friday Night Live, and it was a really cool pen and ink sketch of a Frazetta. And I did it, um, yeah, it was, you know, did it while I was chatting and talking to people and stuff. So it's got a really nice feel, though, a nice vignette feel. It's not exactly like Frazetta's, but it is got a lot of that Frazetta, Frazetta feel, flavor. He's one of my favorites for design, calligraphy, idealization of form. Here's another page of Frazetta's, vignettes of, of uh, arms, legs, backs, hands, 
um, learning musculature, learning how to exaggerate musculature, learning how to accentuate, doing it in a very direct medium where you have to commit to your strokes, commit to what you're thinking, commit to what you're learning. And that's one thing that I think you'll find with ballpoint pen is it's an incredibly poignant and deliberate medium where we have to premeditate our moves similar to a very strategic type medium, I would say. Something like playing chess where you're thinking about your moves, you're countering your moves, you're thinking about what's going to happen next because you don't have the ability to erase it like we do in lots of other mediums. So that's a little smattering there. And then I'm just going to go through some various sketchbooks. Again, more for Zeta. Um, really nice page of legs and arms. Um, just a little made up figure, you know, just kind of, again, doodling. Uh, this is just a normal sketchbook of mine. You might see a little bit of everything in here from, again, and this is an invented page on the right, Frazetta on the left, probably warmed up with Frazetta and then did some little made up figures. This is my dad's sketchbooking class. I took it and this, this, this will dovetail nicely with sketchbooking phase. Um, and this is kind of, um, I may or may not do part of that, but my dad, Lucas and Eric all did, uh, some I and, and I'll be doing kind of the same thing in this phase here. So maybe I will, maybe I won't. But you'll get my version of it in this class. So this is a uh, I think he gave us a bunch of reference. It was on um, World War II, and our job was to create a vignette page out of it. So to take you know five ten pieces of reference and create some kind of page sketch page that had a theme. And how you designed it was up to you how you did it. So this is just kind of an example of what I came up with. And again, it was just done in class, just playing around. Um, this was a demo and I think class as well for ballpoint pen, um, you know, some invented heads for also another thing you'll be seeing today. These are some examples of things you will be seeing me kind of do are these, you know, just again, um, this was a, a, a photo I had and I kind of invented a balloon up in the top just to kind of sensationalize, make it a little bit more romantic and I just had some fun with it. Okay. So when sketchbooking is a fun medium, it's a medium where you just explore. Here's a little invented figure. And uh, very nice, got a great calligraphy. It has a little bit of a Claire Windling look to it, or maybe even a Mooka. And uh, the whimsical line in here and how I'm designing around the shadows and within the shadows rather than just filling it in generically. I'm letting my, my, my strokes create a very calligraphic, um, lyrical quality to them, which gives a really nice aesthetic feel, which means it looks good. And again, whenever we draw anything, I don't care whether it's this hand indication here where the knuckles, you got an index finger and then the rest of the hand, very Bridgman, very Frazetta. Um, so I'm drawing upon my knowledge from those areas, bringing it into this drawing. I could have some Riley rhythms in there, all kinds of, you know, some, some, uh, like I said, Mooka, maybe some, uh, uh, Loomis coming in. This stuff is so amazingly varied. Um, this is a Dean Cornwell vignette, um, demo, uh, just a little invented head. Um, here's another theme where I think my, we had witches or warlocks or something. And, uh, it was a vignette page I created in my dad's class. For that and it may be you know each one of these might be a little 10 15 minute sketch um some mad max stuff where i was just sketching cars and and guys from that movie a little bit of phil hale in here who's an, i'm another big fan of him i love his design sense uh phil's kind of a little more obscure he's a comic artist but also can hold his own in almost anything um so anyway that's kind of this one i'm not going to go through too much more of that because some of the exercises for today are in that book as well um couple other ones I want to show you. One of them is an anatomy um, sketchbook, and this is one that I use primarily only for studying anatomy, this particular sketchbook. So we'll have, again, some Frazetta stuff uh, in there. We'll have, I'm trying to think here, I kind of bookmarked the ones that were more inking because there's a lot of graphite in here, which is not a problem. But, you know, some of them will just be arms like this where I'm, I'm studying from Bridgman, and I'm going in and Rather than doing it in charcoal or maybe graphite, I'm going through and doing it with ballpoint pen. So you're going to be able to see a lot of uses for ballpoint pen. Pen is a explorative medium for me. I memorize information with it. I design calligraphy with it. I build my dexterity with it. I develop a more keen eye and sense of knowledge with it. So it's a very, very beautiful medium to study in. Some more um, for Zeta legs. And again, I try different pens. Some of these are zebra. Some of these are just um, ball, you know, like a Bic or even Papermate, they're just simple pens. Like this pen is just the standard pen you would use in high school. And uh, you can do some beautiful stuff with it. We have more fancy pens, and we'll go through pens in a moment to show you all the different varieties and, and uh, stuff we have to look forward to. So again, just different pens. This is a little Micron pen, Burnt Sienna, kind of a brown. I like sketching in that a lot of times. Um, whether it's blue, brown, black, it doesn't really matter. But I have certain ones that I have an affinity for that I enjoy. So I use those pens, and you'll find your own. I'll show you the ones I use, but that does not mean that you need to go out and always use those or race around trying to 
um, use that stuff. Um, so we, what would we use ballpoint pen for? Well, we use it again, like I said, to explore ideas. So let's say I'm in my sketchbook and I'm looking at trying to draw some ideas for maybe a character for a comic or I want a, or a concept for a, a movie I'm working on that has centaurs in it or something. Um, now, you may not be a concept. You may be a fine artist or it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, who cares if you're concepting for DreamWorks or you're concepting for a fine art show coming up um, on Western art or something, in, or, you know, or landscapes. or it, It's all interrelated. So these are some cool little uh, micron sketches on gray paper where I used whiteout. Uh, you know, like cheap whiteout that you get for high school. And I went around and I highlighted it to pop certain things forward. And that's just a little, another little sketch technique um, that you can play around with. It's really wonderful. And you'll see a number of these that I was doing because I love centaurs. I like horses and I like anatomy, human anatomy. So I was kind of building off of Heinrich Klee, who was also a wonderful inker that did a lot of whimsical subject matter, lyrical. He was also kind of a satirist. Uh, Frazetta borrowed a lot from him. Uh, his concepts and stuff. So um, just another neat guy to think about. This is a cool page of dinosaurs and heads. And, for, you know, I mean, I've got everything from, I think, uh, Jim Buscema, who's a comic artist, to um, some Jurassic Park stuff mixed with some Mooka or some uh, maybe Alma Tadema mixed with, I think this was a Bridgman little vignette down here with some Claire Windling. So, I mean, in this page alone, you have so much learning happening. I'm learning how to design like, like Cornwell. I'm learning how to take some of the stuff I like from Claire Wendling. I'm inventing figures using the information I'm learning from that. I'm coming over here and designing this T-Rex, which is more of an, you know, I've got to work more out with more of my animal anatomy, but I still have to think about, you know, joints and tech, you know, all this stuff that we, we learn in other things. So everything's cross-platforming. Everything's moving in and out of each other. And that's the main thing we need to remember. You're going to see a lot of inking tutorials out there. You're going to see a lot of people telling you different things. Um, take them with a grain of salt. They're just springboards from which you to work off of. You know, I'll, I'll show you my technique and it's going to differ from some other guy's technique or girl's technique. And you're just going to have to pick the ones that work best for you. But the main thing is, is that I'm showing you that this is a way that you learn, you memorize. So sketching, you can take it anywhere. You can take it on a plane with you. You can have a you know, ballpoint pen and a sketch pad with you anywhere you go. You can sketch people sitting at Starbucks. You can, I mean, you can do all kinds of wonderful things if you're disciplined enough and you just have the wherewithal to say, yeah, I'm going to go do that. So anyway, a lot of this stuff is kind of redundant, it's just nice sketches. Um, I'm going to be doing a ton of these for you today. So rather than bore you with endless, you know, things like that, let's uh, move on to materials. Now, material, paper-wise, you, you just saw as I was pulling out all those different sketches. I mean, there's, there's tone paper, there's bristles, there's just sketch paper, general sketch paper, which could be any number of things. Um, don't worry about it. I mean, play around. Buy a bunch of different sketch pa uh, pads. Buy a, a bunch of different um, papers. Uh, in, the sub in the material aspect of the PDF for this, you'll have a list of maybe some general sources you can go to. One of them is jet pens. Dot com and they they carry a lot of quill stuff brush inking material and we'll get into all that when we do quill and brush each one will be separated out and I'll show you the particulars of each one of them so I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself here these little micron pens uh, micron 0.005 um, this is the burnt sienna ones um, the brown ones and they come in different uh, you know there's a zero one uh, point zero or zero zero five which is smaller and as you go up in the numbers, they get a little larger. So I've got a couple different varieties there of that pen, which I'll use. And I'm just gonna, you know, move through the different pens because each pen will uh, make you draw a little differently, will handle the paper a little differently. So it takes some experimenting, it takes some time to get really familiar with any medium. These are the High Tech C pens. I like them a lot. They're Pilot is the brand, High Tech C. And this is a 0.3 or an 03, and this is a 0.4. Um, so again, the numbers as they get smaller, the tips get smaller, and as they get larger, they get a little bit thicker and a little bit, a little bit different. So you might want to try a bunch of varieties of those. You've got your normal Bic and Papermate. So there's a FedEx office, yeah, that'll work fine. Here's a Papermate, doesn't matter. Any of those ballpoint pens that you used to use in high school to take notes with would be fine as well. Here's some br uh, pens that, here's a brush pen. So it's a pen that has a little bit more calligraphic tip on it. I may do one drawing with that. This is not really, that kind of starts to branch into brush inking. And we don't want to really mix these up too much. Some of these just have different tips. Like this is a wider, fatter tip pen. Um, it's a zebra. 
and it uh, it can be nice for laying in um, thicker areas in a sketch depending on what kind of sketch look you're going for here's a technical drawing pen and it's just really fine uh, again doesn't matter there's a lot of great options out there and then you have the ballpoint pens that are a little bit more I don't know fluid things like this uh, Pentel um, Technica hybrid a fancy name for whatever just sounds cool but these ones will lay down ink a little bit thicker, a little bit more wet than say the paper mates and stuff like that. So it really depends on kind of what you want, what you like, what you're into. Um, these are all things that we have to uh, just kind of play around with and explore. Now I'm going to kind of use these little dots, these Stedler sticky dots, like they're, they're basically drafting dots and it just helps keep your stuff down if you're doing like layovers or tracings or whatever.